given okay and start with the presentation sir okay 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 yes thank you thank you mr sir uh, so sir uh, i will tell you the slides so please uh, switch according to that okay uh, coming back so during this covid 19 pandemic we have come across multiple instances of hate and jitoization targeting a particular community whether it be uh, the bahujan by indian muslims or uh, chinese uh, the jews uh, name it so it is important to understand the history of hate during the pandemics in the pre covidian era so that's what uh, we are calling it now the pre covidian and post covidian era like the ad and bc so in the pre covid era some of us might have not even thought of the tremendous importance that contagions hold in social sites a contagion with its speed and range of spread its lethal impact pervasive ignorance of cause and cure have devastated empires economies and societies and how over time enforced the reordering of our political economic and social lives so pandemic is as much as a social phenomena as much as it is a biological one so i feel that so as uh, practitioners of social science or as students of social science there is an urgency there is a need there is an importance to understand the social effects of the pandemic that we are fighting now and only with uh, that level of understanding we can fight it better uh, mr sir can you move to slide 3 the first one in the story of typhoid mary so can you put in the present it in the presentation mode it is still uh, not in the presentation mode yes thank you sir so the story of typhoid mary it is without if we don't include the story of typhoid mary or mary malen in this presentation this presentation will not be rich it not may not be full it may not be filled so as you can see it is clearly written that typhoid mary is one of the most harmless of women most harmless of household worker to have lived but she is the most dangerous woman in america sir if you move to the second slide sir, uh, sir can you move to slide number 4 typhoid mary dead at 70 gave fever to many uh, sir can you move to the next slide slide number 5 here you can see mary as a witch so this were part of a propaganda material accusing mary and there are there is a huge baggage of hate that is stored behind all this propaganda material so let's go on with the story of mary so it happened in the 1900s in usa so the denizens of the long island which is in new york started uh, having cases mysterious occurrences of typhoid and traditionally typhoid is uh, people who uh, are uh, done research or have studied about typhoid know that typhoid is uh, during that time was understood mainly with uh, poverty and filth but this time the disease of the disease of typhoid was contracted by some of the most affluent in the society so it perplexed both the city administration and also the urban neighborhood so a scientific engineer named george soper was put in investigation after exhaustive investigation he found that there is a common factor between all the eight families that had contracted typhoid 
the common factor was the household help or the maid mary malen she was an irish woman of middle age and in further investigation it was found that she had already infected 53 people and uh, malen was asymptomatic and she had no symptoms of typhoid but it was found that she was pinned as the one who propagated one who contaminated these eight families with typhoid and she was arrested she was uh, accused she was forced to provide samples she was forced to undergo medical trials against her will and when the results came out as everyone expected she was tested positive with salmonella typhi this led to the news of public disapproval falling on her uh, neck and science was quite happy because science has always worked as a tool of the empire science was quite happy because they have confirmed the existence of the long proposed theory of healthy carriers but mary was disgraced and she went down in the history as typhoid mary she was quarantined for long 26 years until her death in 1938 and uh, understanding this instance further typhoid outbreaks were this is not the first time that new york was witnessing or us was witnessing typhoid outbreaks but this time mary malen was singled out as the public enemy it may be that she remained at the rich of the inefficacies of their social and economic barriers in front of pathogen this story has been using has been used for decades as a moniker normalizing vilification and violence against the poor household keepers or housekeepers uh, sir can you move to the next slide slide number 6 mr sir please let's thank you uh so to understand the reason of this hate why was she targeted why was a irish woman targeted so to understand that uh we should know about the latent heat that was the vent uh, the vengeance that the people of us held against the irish the irish migrated to us in the 1850s due to the potato blight you know that everybody uh, every student of history knows that so as soon as they migrated as they as soon as they reached the us the people of us became hostile towards migrants yeah you got it right this is not the first time covid 19 or uh, the era of trump is not the first time when the people of us has become hostile to migrants we will discuss it in length when we discuss about the italian problem so uh, with the people of I ireland the people of us became hostile they were seen as a source of contagion and uh, they were seen as the causes of all the troubles and all uh, the crimes in us they were also seen as a threat to the american jobs and also for straining the welfare budgets so it was this because mary was an irish and the irish were seen with hate with contempt as the other by the U people of usa it was due to this that they did when they got an opportunity when they saw an irish woman spreading contagion they used this opportunity to make everyone believe that their theory of the irish spreading contagion in their homeland is true uh, mr sir can you move to the next slide of the covid 19 infected maid uh many of us have come to uh, see this ad by kent it was removed uh, very quickly and uh, if you see this slide it's really interesting it says that uh, you should not allow your maid to make your bread or uh, your your roti because her hands may be infected she is coming from a uh, slum background she is coming from a poor background she may be you know harboring uh, covid 19 virus in her her hands may be filled with filth of covid 19 so 
if uh, she may be another mary malan or covid 19 mary in this sense and she may you know uh, wreck your family so instead you skin can the atta maker and can bread maker so that you can keep this made out i her infected hand out and you can have tasty and healthy bread and atta and uh, i mean uh, roti so uh, it's mysterious how capitalism is using uh, covid 19 to its benefit and this is not our topic so i won't delve much uh, vishnu sir can we move to the other slide yes now we will uh, discuss about another topic another section which is uh, really affected by contagion there are no other religious groups in the history of mankind that was persecuted as much as the jews and epidemics believe me it was was been it is more deadly it was more deadly in the history of jews every time epidemics has carried deadly anti semitism the earliest evidence of these accusations or anti semitism comes from the work of manetho of egypt uh, he was a priest during the time of ptolemy 1 and ptolemy 2 of the 30th dynasty and he accused the jews of being the source of contagion like annual plague and seasonal malaria that befell egypt and uh, you uh, even who has an idea of the history of jews know that know that they uh, were the slaves in egypt they fled they migrated they rebelled against the pharaoh so it may be this latent this deep stored vengeance that made manetho to write this in his uh, famed book egyptiaka so moving forward in the 14th century we are seeing this anti semitism during an epidemic again 14th century was the period of black death of the bubonic plague that peaked in europe between the 1346 and 1353 and the catholic church during this time became pretty convinced that the plague was a jewish conspiracy to undermine christianity so they accused the jews of deep seated misanthropy or the hate towards mankind combined with the age old intellectual roots of slander of poison which accused the jewish physicians jewish doctors of being asserted by the jewish law to poison one out of every 10 patients so basically when that the jewish doctors were murderers they by their torah by the jewish bible by the jewish law were asserted to kill one in every 10 person by using poison the jews the jews during the black death or during the bubonic plague they were accused of poisoning the wells and they were subjected to horrific torture and false confessions were extracted out of them and when they did they were burned alive the image that you are seeing now it is a contemporary drawing of the people of strasbourg in france the jews 2000 jews being burned in a pit as uh, the description says on the february 14th 1349 and the contemporary record says that the air of france had the smell of bird in jewish flesh during uh, the entire period of black death even children were not left alone the children which were thrown out of this uh, fire the jewish children who were thrown out by their parents to somehow save them from the fire they were thrown back to the fire by the public and going by uh, what professor haim hilal ben sasan a professor of medieval jewish history in israel says that 300 jewish communities were entirely destroyed during this period of black death and uh, we will go a little more further how did the church related jews with condemning wells for that we should read the works of dr iris ritzman she says that the christian propaganda of the 14th century and even before equated the jews with the lepers lepers were apprehended from time immemorial for suspecting 
the poisoning of wells using their blood, the urine, and the fecal material. And the medieval church extracted confessions out of them also and also burned them. In uh, so that was the connection because the Jews were identified with lepers. Lepers used to contaminate wells. Thus, A is equal as we say in maths. A is equal to B. B is equal to C. So that's uh, it's a proof to say that A is equal to C. So the lepers used to contaminate wells. The Jews are equal to lepers. So the Jews contaminated the wells. So that's the mathematical equation that they arrived at. And in 1348. There was a trial near Lake Geneva and the Jews were pressured to assert that they were forced by the Torah to require every Jewish person above the age of seven to participate in well poisoning. So the Jewish community is charged so they were taken to as procession to the graveyards. They were ordered to build their own funeral pyres and set themselves ablaze. But as Professor Samuel Cohen says that after some time after the uh, end of this black death, rationality come back and uh, the Jewish were acquitted. Explanations began to come from many of the European cities saying that the plague death were not caused by the Jews, but it was the effect of the planet. So we may think that the Jews are saved. Okay, they were accused. Anyway, uh, after the back black death, uh, things uh, came back to normal. They are not accused anymore. But it is not the end of the story. In 1401, again, with the coming of cholera and plague to Europe, they were, the Jews were accused of poisoning the air. And this time, the miasma theory, which says that diseases like cholera or plague were caused by contaminated air. The miasma theory was used to accuse the Jews of poisoning the air because poisoning the air, the poisonous air is the reason according to miasma theory for causing diseases. And uh, Vishnu sir, can you move to the slide? Vishnu sir. Yes. And these claims, the intellectual baggage of these claims were used well by Adolf Hitler, the Führer. So here you see, this is the front cover of a book written by Hermann Esser, named The Jewish World Plague. So here you can see a serpent. Please, please look at that. You can see a serpent who has surrounded the earth and you can see a Nazi sword. Nazi sword is there. So it has, it is stabbing or it has stabbed the serpent. The serpent here, as you understand, is the Jews. So this book by, please, please switch off your uh, mic. So, so this book by Erman Hesse was published in 1933 and it was republished in 1939. And it was the Nazi propaganda material for uh, maybe two, two decades against the Jews. And in his book, he quotes, and I will read this quote for you. Herman Esser says that the knowledge of Jews must be brought to every attic, every corner of Great Germany. The knowledge that the Jews was a world plague from the beginning, they remained so for millennia and will remain forever one. Whenever Jews has appeared, it has never built anything. It has always and everywhere destroyed or torn down, sucking others dry to fill itself. From the days of the Romans to our day, Jews in every century, in every people, was and remain a foreign body, a destroyer of real and ideal values. I will stop here. It's a long paragraph. But here, there's a term foreign body. So uh, to understand this term foreign body, we should look at the growth of science or medicine during that time. It was a time when the theory of germ, the germ theory 
was propagated by Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur. Robert Koch is known as the father of microbiology, microbiology and he developed uh, or he identified the causes of diseases like tuberculosis, cholera and anthrax. And you know what Pasteur did. So it was the time when people or the world was coming to know that, uh, coming to believe properly that germs are the reasons for diseases. So, and the germs are a foreign body as per the theory. So Herman Esser is using that science to say that the Jews are a foreign body which has entered our daily life, our body, the body of the nation, the body of our culture, the body of the German civilization and is destroying that body or tearing that body apart. And he goes on to say that as we know the Jews uh, are called the chosen people. And he said that this is the chosenness. The chosenness of the Jews is to be the destructive pestilence of the world for the mankind. And uh, I should not explain what Hitler may have thought of this and uh, wrote in his main calf. Main calf is full of passages which uh, speak about the Jewification of the spiritual and uh, the material life of the Germans and how the Jews are the plague, the typhus, the Jewish typhus. As they are, Vishnu sir, uh, can you move to the next slide? Please switch off your mic, uh, mic and sir, please uh, can you move to the next slide? Then other one, the next one. Yes, 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 contagion and anti-Semitism, yes. So if, what you are seeing is, is this a sec uh, please, I request you to switch off the mic. I told you I'm using a earphone. It's really, uh, really deafening to me to hear long uh, shrills. Yes, thank you. And what you see here, <clears throat> it is an anti-Semitic propaganda, uh, which came out in the Polish language, which accuses during the Second World War time, which accuses the Jews of spreading tuberculosis, syphilis, and cancer. And you can see. Uh, in the circle, there is a vermin with the Jewish face. Uh, he's eating up something. So, coming back, Hitler called himself as the Robert Koch of politics, or as the great doctor, you may say. And he credited himself for identifying the pestilence that affected German politics and daily life. And even the movies like uh, Eternal Jew, which was, uh, you know, which came out which was released in 1940, depict Jews as rats and vermin. And he, uh, and to go further, the Nazis, the long association of Jews with epidemics from the time of uh, Manetho, from the time of Greece, from the time of the Greek civilization to the Black Death and beyond, Nazis used Nazis justified the walling of Jewish parts of the town as a cure against the spread of Jewish typhus. And the gas chambers, uh, sir, can you move to the next slide? The gas chambers in the concentration camps, sir, please move to the next slide, were camouflaged as delousing baths so that the Jews, which are lice, uh, they are bacteria, they are viruses, they can be, you know, made clean, they can be killed. So please move to the other slide. This is a Polish uh, propaganda. You can see a Jew being uh, seen as a lies. And yes, this is what uh, Hitler believed. This was published in uh, the annual or the magazine Der Sturmer in uh, December 1927. It says that the title was When the Vermin Are Dead the Greek oak will flourish again. You can see a Nazi, he's pumping poison to the root of the tree, which is filled with juice. Rats. You can see a rat just in front of the Nazi person. So they are seen as rats. And if you kill these rats, if you uh, kill this typhus, if you kill this Jewish plague, uh, the German oak or the German culture, it will come back to what it was. And sir, so, uh, can you move to the next slide? Even Christianity, Christianity is seen as the religion of the piety, 
the religion which has contributed much to the world even christianity was not spared what you see here is a later day painting of the antonine plague of 165 ad so this was a, as i told you it was created in uh, 1857 by the french painter delanoy he says that he was inspired by a 1940 uh, 1476 fresco on the plague epidemic and also by the book golden legend written by varaje so if you look please uh, look clearly into the picture i request all of you to look in the picture you can see two a one is a bad angel and other armed with a pike the uh, yes you can see a good angel over there uh, with the wings with the white wings and you can see a bad angel sitting in uh, front of the door he is armed with a pike so the good angel seems to be instructing ordering the bad angel to strike the house and as the legend goes it every house had asked when it did as the number of blows that the bad angel blew and if you look at the background you can see the statue of marcus aurelius in a horse you can see a couple of roman citizens who are died and also near the door near the pillar of the door you can see two people begging for help from the roman god of medicine esculapius and uh, oh, and uh, see uh, and look at the stairs which accompany the picture or the statue uh, so please change to uh, presentation mode uh, you can see uh, near the statue statue of marcus aurelius there is a stair i can and you can see that the stairs are the walk down by the christian community or the christian priest there's a procession of priest that's coming out uh, they are uh, following the path created by uh, these two uh, angels angels of death and angels uh, and the other uh, good angel so it is in a way saying that the angels of death and destruction paved the way for the coming of christianity to rome so please uh, please uh, turn back to uh, presentation mode so as we can see the angels the angels uh, are seeing the way uh, they are making the way for the cross to come to rome so going to the history of this we can see that the antonian plague which uh, lasted from 165 AD to 180 AD was blamed on the Christian community. Their indifference of the Christian community, the Roman gods, by Marcus Aurelius as the reason for the occurrence of the plague. But uh, later, uh, as we all know, uh, the later researchers have shown that uh, the plague was carried by the Roman troops, which came from the Near East. So it should be this uh, particular instance should be understood as a period when the uh, Christianity and the pagan religion of Rome they were contesting each other to maintain the hold on the people and it was the grudge it was the violent hate that the Romans or the followers of the pagan religion even the king which held against the Christians during that time which led to the formation of a painting like this or the narration of the event like this and sir if you uh, move forward sir can you uh, go to the next slide and put it in the presentation mode sir please keep it in the presentation mode sir next slide please agne people are joining in that's the reason when i have to switch over on occasion Yes, we will wait for the next slide. Yes, <laughs> contagions and homophobia. And yes, even today, the propaganda against homosexuals use AIDS as a major weapon. Being homosexual or homosexuality is not the only reason for contracting the HIV. There are multiple reasons, multifarious reasons, but the single reason of being a homosexual, the belief that it is the homosexuals who are the pestilence, 
who are the ones who propagate aids is uh, running across every country every civilization that we have come across and if you see uh, the picture it says that you can see clearly homosexuality plus aids is equal to 100% so if you are a homosexual it is 100% uh, sure that you will be carrying the aids virus and uh, let me tell you the aids which we call the acute immunodeficiency syndrome it was not the first name uh, for the disease the disease was earlier called GIRD gay related immunodeficiency or the gay plague the aids was called as the gay plague during the 1980s uh, so can you move uh, forward to the next slide even uh, we uh, last month we saw Russia passing a law against uh, bisexual or homosexual marriages and uh, even homosexual marriages are prevented in most countries and even countries have prevented the homosexuals from donating organs so this homophobia you can see here this is a uh, procession this was a march that happened in java in 2016 against uh, lgbt community so uh, this homophobia continues to be the barrier in our fights against the TV. In the beginning of the HIV, in 1980s, in many countries, gay men were frequently targeted. They were singled out for abuse as they were seen as responsible for transmission of HIV. And uh, let me tell you, this homophobia is defeating our fight against HIV. Uh, in a study that was held in Mexico on homosexuals, it was found that the self-stigma, the, the homosexuals have internalized the stigma. They are internalized homophobia and are not willing to go out and test uh, the HIV. So this is defeating our entire process against HIV, this stigma on homosexuals. Uh, as now we know that uh, by 2006, there were 92 countries which legalized gay marriages. And 2016, it came back to 73. And if you look at the uh, statistics in 2020 it will be still lesser and because 2020 or oh, the uh, one or two years uh, before this COVID is seen as the period of rise of uh, right-wing mentality or right-wing political alliances in most countries uh, I won't deal with that because that's not what I'm here to uh, so can you move to the next slide yes and uh, the next one okay the previous one sir uh, actually this was uh, not the picture i had put here uh, the picture was blanketed as you know <laughs> i will tell you something uh, in 2012 there was an order by the election commission uh, which said that all the symbols of bsp that were the symbol of Hathi and Mayavadi and Kanchi Ramsar, uh, which were uh, in use or which were in uh, UP, should be hidden with drapers. But still, uh, even if you hide uh, the statue, the Murti of the Hathi uh, with a draper, you can still understand what it is. So this was not the picture. Uh, the picture I uh, intended to use was, they were two, uh, they, the picture of uh, two Negroes or the African Americans, they were uh, finding pleasure each other. Uh, you know what I mean? These uh, two men, they are, uh, we can understand them as gay. They were finding pleasure each other. And this was propagated with the title saying that easy to get and easy to treat and easy to get again. So this, uh, in a way, was used as a propaganda against the African Americans and to understand why it was used in such a way we have to understand one thing after the civil war the American civil war of 1861 and 65 uh, what we see is that the uh, Negroes became free 
and most of the states the southern states they were not allowing the slaves to uh, hold property so the slaves migrated or the negroes migrated to the wild west so uh, and 25 percentage of the wild west population were blacks and what you see is that it was this latent hate for the blacks which led to a depiction of two blacks having oral sex with each other with the title saying that they are going to have syphilis and it is syphilis is easy to get and it is it is easy to treat and it is easy to get again so please move to the next slide in the next slide you can see that two men are looking uh, in their private parts and so please stage the next slide we will wait for the next slide yes two men are looking at their private parts and says that uh, they are worried that they got the syphilis they got the uh, so this is not the slide which i meant uh, so two men you can see in a while uh, there is some problem with yes yes uh, so you can see two men they are looking at their private parts and they are wondering that they got the syphilis again which is easy to get easy to treat and easy to get away as uh, the americans say so for ages this type of stds like syphilis gonorrhea and hepatitis b has been attached purely to the uh, gays or the homosexuals and being a gay or being a homosexual is one of the many reasons for the contraction of syphilis gonorrhea or hepatitis so it is this latent hate this is this deep rooted hate which the normal the normal people or the society they had i say quote and quote normal normal people or the society had towards these homosexuals that led to propaganda of these types during epidemics okay so i'm moving on to the next one yes epidemics and uh, contagions and witch hunt uh, to speak of the history of witch hunt and how contagion led to witch hunt we will have to take the entire day as we don't have the entire day i will just uh, speak of one instance one or two instances and we will move forward this right here is the salem witch hunt of 1692 which happened in massachusetts in us uh, the witch hunt mainly uh, was happening due to the belief of the demonic theory of contagion which believed that it was the demon which led to the creation of diseases or the uh, birth of contagion the belief in the supernatural and the power of the devilish entity or the devils to give certain human beings the power to harm others in return of their loyalty was uh, running a wild running wild in uh, the new english colonies also in the Uh, you know middle and later middle ages in europe so salem uh, was a uh, village of puritan community by 1689 they had a very bad time by 1689 they, we are seeing british war with france in american colonies we are seeing a outbreak of uh, smallpox uh, epidemic smallpox epidemic uh, in salem then there are fears of the attack of uh, the native americans and uh, so thus salem was uh, the puritan community of salem was in great distress in 1689 and so uh, they started blaming by 1689 only they started blaming the outsiders and those who have stayed or wished to stay outside the pale of the society as witches and two years after this two years after the outbreak of smallpox in 1692 in the month of january a 9 year old girl please switch off your uh, mics uh, in uh, january a 9 year old girl named elizabeth paris and her cousin abigail williams of 11 years they were both the daughters uh, daughter and niece of the uh, minister of salem village respectively they began to develop fits and violent contortions and uh, uncontrollable outburst of screaming 
so they were taken to the nearby doctor the local doctor william gigs uh william gigs diagnosed that uh, sir can you uh, please make it uh, in the presentation mode so william gigs he found out that these girls were bewitched and it soon led to arrest three people were arrested uh related to this incident of uh falling of sick of elizabeth and abigail and they were a caribbean slave named so the uh, other slides are not this one they were the caribbean slave named tibuta and there was this homeless beggar named sara good and there was a poor elderly so the other side please sir named uh, sara osborne we will wait for the slide because i have to show you something over there there is some technical uh, stag from our part sorry for that so note this one sir sir, sir the uh, one behind you sir no no please go behind sir please sir please please sir please go behind sir please go behind uh okay we will we will move further hey, you are not audible can you be bit more audible i can't hear you uh, sir can you go to the previous slide go to the previous slide sir go to the previous slide is this one yeah 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 thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much so you can see the three which is here there is this caribbean slave tibota you can see her in the middle with her with the uh, traditional uh, wear of that uh, caribbean slaves in her head you can see uh, sara osborne and also you can see sara good and it is shown that they are burned at the stake and uh, you can see the devil see see the picture you can see the devil just flying out of their body so this was a propaganda material this was in a way this showed that all what happened in uh, the town of salem in 1962 all that feats all that violent contortions all that out screams all that bustings which happened which happened in uh, salem in 1962 all that were happening in salem in 1962 where the work of the devil these witches this demon woman they were in company of the demons and they were befalling this kind of epidemics in salem and when they were taken to court uh they, they they confessed you know uh state has many methods to make somebody confess and this uh, led to this incident of uh this uh, incident led to burning of many at the stakes more than 19 people were executed during this period and in uh, 1976 Uh, the magazine science they published a piece on this i uh, just went through that piece it's quite interesting so what they did is that they found that there is a fungus named ergot which lives in rye wheat and other cereals and this fungus has toxic ecological characters which caused symptoms like delusion vomiting muscle spasm and uh, violent behavior so it was not bewitchment it was not devil it was just a fungus which has led to all these but it was the medieval and later medieval period and uh, the society was looking for people who were outside the pale of society to punish and rightly they found uh, the slaves and <coughs> women of a uh, questionable character the woman who stepped out of their prescribed roles the woman who were wealthy 
the woman uh, who had too many children the woman who had uh, two less children or no children all these were see all the women who went outside the societal notion or the no, uh, normal were seen as bewitched or the as we may say they were the secret believers of the demon so uh, can you uh, i won't um, talk further in this because we are exhausting the time so can you uh, move to the next slide sir uh, the other one, the, uh, the next chapter this. So the next one, sir. Yes, epidemic orientalism. Epidemic orientalism is. Uh, have you heard of the word uh, disease named MERS? Many of us have heard. Uh, in 2012, we had an attack of MERS globally. So MERS is named. Middle Eastern Respiratory Shrimp Syndrome. So the word itself says Middle Eastern, like the Spanish flu. Speaking of uh, Spanish flu of 1980, it was an H1N1 uh, virus infected influenza. It happened soon after the First World War. And the only mistake that Spain did is that Spain went public. Spain went and said that, hey, see here, people of the world, uh, we have a new fever of here. We have a new form of influenza. Spain, the Spaniards made it public. And uh, uh, due to their misfortune, it was named the Spanish flu. Same with, uh, so when we look back, as Alexander White coined the term epidemic orientalism, we have a long uh, saga of diseases which are named after places. So it is believed that the invention of the or the discovery of uh, the invention of the germ theory by Louis Pasteur and the use of microphone and uh, sorry microscope both these were used at the tool of empire and the colonial empire in the tropics were for the past century perplexed on what to do about the teeming diseases in the 19th century <clears throat> or even beyond in the 18th century also the colonial government in the tropics were perplexed on what to do about the teeming diseases which the Anglo-European were not immune to because they are not from here they came from somewhere outside and they found mosquitoes as most insurgent than the colonial subjects it was the microscope that shaped the colonial understanding of the tropical disease the engagement of the colonial empire with the tropics along with the advantages made in the field of science defined pinned diseases like cholera to the tropical environment and body so as you see there are many diseases named after places there is the asiatic cholera of 1826 asiatic plague of 1846 asiatic flu of 1956 the rift valley flu of uh, or fever of 1900s uh, sir can you move forward sir you can see in the presentation this asiatic cholera in bristol Indian cholera, so the, the other one, the Hong Kong flu of 1968, so the other one, the MERS Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. It is also a, it is actually a coronavirus. We should have named it uh, COVID uh, toll. We should have named it COVID toll, but we uh, the epidemic orientalism made us do uh, a trump. It made us Trump, uh, it made us all like Donald Trump and we mailed it, uh, we named it Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. And as you know why these uh, names came up, these names came up because the colonial empire or the Occident thought that these diseases, these contagion, they were endemic to these regions. For example, the Asiatic cholera was endemic to the Gangetic region, same with uh, Asiatic plague to China, uh, Hong Kong flu to uh, Hong Kong, MERS to Middle East. So it was that belief that some places, the tropics, were full of teeming bacteria, which led to naming like this. And uh, thanks to WHO, they came with an impartial mechanism uh, to name all the contagions after uh, recently. But I don't think that it is working anymore. With uh, Trump out here, we 
uh, find other names for COVID-19. We hear of the Kung Fu flu and we also hear of uh, the Chinese virus. So uh, WHO stands nothing in front of Trump. Uh, okay, I will uh, do uh, stop my Trump bashing now. Uh, sir, can you go to the session on contagion and anti-terrorism? Sir, please move to the next slide. Uh, we will wait for a second. Uh, sir, can you move to the next slide? Uh, am I audible to you, sir? Sir, can you move to the next slide, please? Mr. Sir? Yes, thank you, sir. So, uh, polio and contagion and anti italianism So, here is a piece, a propaganda material that came out in 1891. Uh, the propaganda material was titled Where the Blame Lies. You can see clearly there's a short man standing there. An American, if you see the hat and the coat, he is showing Uncle Sam, you can see Uncle Sam, the troubles, the reasons for the troubles of America. The crowd which is standing down, you can see most of them are poor, most of them are sick, uh, most of them are not in their good shape. The crowd includes Italian brigands and Irish paupers. So it was said that it is these people, the Italians and the Irish, or the people who came from outside, the immigrants, the Mexicans, the Blacks, the Caribbeans, the Africans, these people were the source of contagion. These were the source of diseases that came to America um, and not the settlers. And uh, I ask a person who studies this, I uh, can't move forward without seeing the Colombian exchange. America was a pristine land. It was you, Columbus, who came to America and gave them syphilis. <laughs> uh, moving forward, sir, can you move to the next uh, slide? America was a pristine place. It was uh, inhabited by the Red Indians. It was Columbus who came and gave them many uh, diseases in the Colombian exchange. Even syphilis came to America like that. So even the whites who are living in America, the uh, descendants of the uh, Colombian tradition is to be blamed, mm, but it is how power works. Power won't let it blame itself. Power will only blame the sub depressed, suppressed foreign and the other. That's how power works. Okay, uh, now you are seeing here is a picture, is a propaganda material of the New York town in 1960. So what happened? So let me tell you a story. In 1960, there began a sudden outburst of infantile polio, infantile paralysis in the US. And the initial polio outbreaks came from the Pictown. Pictown is an Italian neighborhood which is populated by the immigrants from Naples uh, who are surrounded by piles of stinging garbage and free roaming pigs. And Pictown is in uh, modern southern Brooklyn. So the first case of this infantile polio, infantile paralysis, happened in Naples. Oh, sorry, sorry, happened happened in Pitta. And from there, it spread to the entire US. And when the Americans, the public came to know about this, and the press, they did very best. They circulated all the stories of plight. Uh, these uh, Native Americans, I mean, the people who stay now, uh, the whites, uh, uh, the plight their kids are facing due to these Italians, due to the polio the outbreak that came with the Italians to the, from the from uh, the Naples through the people who are migrated to the big town in southern Brooklyn. When the stories came out, it publicly created a spark wave of anti-Italian prejudices. And you know what the government did? The entire eastern side and the entire cities, they were depopulated. 
people were asked to flee places like southern brooklyn and long island and heavily armed police patrolled the roads and railway stations to prevent the italians from leaving the pig town thus they were quarantined the italians were quarantined for the entire one or two years in pig town in southern brooklyn so this is how the contagion worked before the pandemic of covid 19 so now we will move to the covid 19 this is the crux of the session i am sorry that the session went little more than i expected because uh, without talk, talking too much about this uh, we can't move further mr sir please the next slide please i told you who during this disease had made it clear that they will be impartial they will be impartial in naming uh the new crisis new pandemic wish to sir please go to the next slide uh so the who said that they will be impartial in naming the contagion and the contagion was named corona uh, the covid 19 so the next slide yes but here comes donald trump and uh somebody like the brazilian person president so they call this kung flu because it originated in china you can see a picture it's uh, kung fu panda with the head of xi jinping and he's playing with the corona virus and you can see the flag of china in the uh, chest of the kung flu panda some the next slide there are lot of propaganda material that's uh, going on uh, during this covid times you can see a kung uh, fu warrior and you can see the chinese flag over there uh, the bigger star is replaced with the symbol of bio hazard so the next slide so the next slide please sir yes uh, the same picture the picture of the chinese flag uh, no so the previous one dubbed with uh, the or represented as uh, five corona virus it came in a danish daily newspaper and the government of china demanded an apology from the danes they said that nothing to win we are not apologizing because it's you it's a chinese virus uh, that is spreading in uh, the danish territory so uh, this is how the world has seen the pandemic of covid 19 so can you move further efforts are being made to pin it on china globally dipping it as covid 19 virus yes coming to india and sri lanka this was a piece that came in india today uh with this single picture you can understand this is a follower of the islamic religion you can see the skull cap and it is saying that 60% of the cases that were reported came from the people who participated in the tablighi jamaat same propaganda was happening in sri lanka also hashtags like covid jihad and bio jihad were trending all over i will skip uh, uh, in a hurry so the next slide please yes uh, you must have seen this uh, it is another it is uh, circulated world right Uh, in 2019 you can see a terrorist and uh, you can see the skull cap or the turban he and the beard with the mustache so he is a muslim uh, he used uh, uh, rn but like uh, bombs in 2019 uh, and 2020 he is using corona virus to conduct the jihad which is dubbed as bio jihad so the next slide please sir and it is not only the muslims but also the jews are being targeted you can see a poster this is from the lockdown protest anti lockdown protest in ohio and the same was shown in hudson you can see uh, there is a mouse a pestilent which is uh, in the color of the jewish flag the jewish flag is shown in the background 
the uh, christ of the star of david can be seen and he is being dumped as he uh, dumped as uh, the kandeji who is spreading covid 19 so the next one so the next slide please yes the star of david is seen in this picture is being replaced by the corona virus in this really fact so the next one i will be uh, moving a little hurry because the time is getting over yes and covid 19 has been used as an event to spill hate to spit hate on the indian citizens of northeast and people who have been outside kerala who have been to north india know that especially uh, delhi know that this happened in i think the march of uh, 2020 uh, people from northeast are uh, ridiculed they are called names so there is a hate of the outsider that's uh, working in north india so this uh, girl she was called the corona virus and she was spit upon by a man who was around 50 uh, in delhi so many things like this happened with the northeastern students who are in delhi or the north northeastern residents in delhi uh, so can you uh, move forward sir the next slide and uh, the covid 19 was also uh, right with the hate to the behujan the me to uh, you know you have heard that the migrants they walked hundreds thousands of kilometers on foot to reach their places to reach their home uh, to get out of cities they were asked to get out of cities at the first uh, then they were prevented from getting out and the affluent the middle class of india began to share tags like me to migrant saying that uh, they had come to delhi or they have come to other places uh, at the age of uh, 2025 they are also migrant and they were uh, saying this then when they were sitting at uh, the comfort of their home under the ac uh, playing their uh, xbox or uh, trending in twitter so uh, different stories but you can understand the hate that's going on and next slide you will understand the hate more the hate of the bahujans you will understand it more sir next slide please sir so this is uh, an event that happened in bareilly in up on the 29th of march the migrant workers who crossed the border to up they were made to sit down they were hosed down with the chemical spray as if they were the corona virus you see this see this the people are hosed down as if they are the corona virus so this is the hate that uh, the dominant the dominant political wing hold towards the bahujan so the next slide yes uh, I, i don't think that the presentation will be full without speaking of uh, social distancing in india so india as we know uh, we can debate but it's a proven fact uh, is suspended between feudalism and religious fundamentalism between caste and capitalism and the term social distancing has been used without understanding the internal dynamics of the country i feel like that i think many of you uh, feel the same social distancing the term is easy to be understood by any indian because that's how the caste works in india in a society where caste related economic political as well as social disabilities still stand tall the term social distancing will have much negative effects and with social distancing with the use of the term or with the practice the possibility of social equality is also exhausted so i think the as one of the rjd mla say say the word physical distancing should be used rather than the term social distancing so coming to the conclusion i will conclude now uh what are the reasons for this hate so what are the reasons for demonizing the other during during the pandemic situations it is often said that it is it is the fear psychosis that accompanies and an endemic which lead to strangers and intruders being blamed it is also the fear of the 
affluent that the bad health of the poor the poor are seen as the pestilent it is the bad health of the poor so can you move to the next slide which may be affecting which may affect the affluent these may so uh, t- uh, traditionally we are or this led to hate during epidemics the fear of the strangers the fear of the intruders and the fear of the poor health of the poor per person affecting the rich but this is only partially true when we understand these uh, hates when we understand the demonizing of the other during the contagion it can be said that these epidemics start deep seated deep rooted social prejudices and hate something that was happening with the indian muslims so there was an atmosphere of hate uh, due to the new nrc and epidemic was used as an instance to further this hate it was used as an instance to vent out the deep rooted deep seated prejudices and hate that the dominant group held towards the suppressed the depressed the foreign and the other and we may say that the world entire world is fighting the corona virus but it is this deep seated do deep, deep rooted vent or prejudices or the hate that we are seeing in that period of this pandemic this is affecting the social cohesion the most and right wing elements throughout the world has used covid 19 as a weapon to eliminate the gray zone of mutual coexistence the gray zone of mutual coexistence is being destroyed every day the demonization of the vulnerable or the other is an example of the lack of social justice existence and discrimination and and of social exclusion obviously and we know the science has progressed too much the germ theory has been established for uh, quite a few centuries one and a half cent- uh, centuries science was supposed to liberate people from irrational belief by proving that pathogens do not inhabit the body of a person belonging to a specific gender race caste religion or sexual preference it only needs a body whether whether be it is of a normal guy quote and quote normal or a homosexual of a hindu or a muslim or a bahujan or an upper caste a jew a sikh the black the white it just needs a body but unfortunately even this scientific understanding of the host and the vector of the disease causing bacteria and the host even the scientific understanding of the host and vector has been appropriated to reinforce prejudices so uh, and one more thing uh, this pandemic has shown us that men of science praying for miracle and men of religion submitting go secretly to science so let's buckle up together let's move forward let's defeat hate let's work against hate let's defeat corona virus and this is what the social scientist or the people who love social science science the social science community who have gathered in this webinar on the 1st of august 2020 in the platform provided by the marthoma college tiruvalla it is the remedy that the social scientist on this day is proposing to the outer community do away with hate do away with covid 19 thank you thank you very much for listening thank you vishnu sir for uh, with the slides okay and okay the floor is now open for discussion and we are running short of time but we will uh, we we will we will have time for discussion we will be not cut shorting in any way because we know that we have gone through a very uh, enterprising performance enterprising uh, <laughs> presentation by acme on a topic with okay uh, there is one question by mr jitin shankar so one second mr jitin shankar is asking uh, good morning acme yeah uh, 
what is your clinical explanation to state that homosexuality is the most important reason for the transmission of uh, STDs? Dear sir, uh, I think uh, you missed uh, what I said. I didn't say that uh, STDs are transmitted by homosexuals. I just said that there is a propaganda that is going on. It is a propaganda that is going on by the dominant to say that it is the homosexuals that are transmitting STDs like AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis. I never said that uh, it is the homosexuals are the sole uh, proprietors of this. It is just a propaganda by the normal, quote unquote, normal people. And another serious issue, you are frequently using certain racial references like Caribbean slaves, African Negroes, sir. I was speaking of the propaganda, sir. I think you missed somewhere over there. And uh, can you justify this irrationally? I want you to uh, switch on also because people see you also. That would be better. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I think uh, you missed the crux of this presentation. I was speaking of the propaganda and I was not using it as hate speech. Thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for asking this, sir. Thank you for your patience in hearing. Sir. Yes, another question. Uh, thank you, Alvin Thomas Jacob. And thank you, Yen Shandi. Uh, thank you, Farsana Tassil. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tindu Skaria. Thank you, uh, Jos Jos. Thank you, Somadatta Patajaria. Uh, thank you, Koshik Thakur. Uh, thank you, many other. I can read all the messages. Yeah, please, if you have any questions, come to. Yes, thank you, Anju. Uh, yeah, if you, yes, if, you can use your mic also. Anyone? Yes, if you have any questions, please come to the chat box or uh, please uh, ask your questions. We are running short of time. Can I mention about the migrant workers in uh, Kerala? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Joel, even uh, we got see. Joel, there is, there is, uh, always, there is always, uh, the hate for the migrant workers. The migrants, anyway, be it in any society, be it developed, underdeveloped, economically or socially, uh, there is always this feeling of. Latin uh, hate when we call the Bengalis, isn't it? So I think that answers your question. And uh, I have yes, yes, sir. The thing is, yes, sir. When we are living in an age where dominating discourses, I mean, they lead the day. How can yes. not subjected or muted voices? I mean, as we know, they never force a collective discourse and always they get relegated or tied up uh, their, I mean, their, I mean, there are an unseen number of reasons that make these forces uh, to be subjected to violence, hatred, and also uh, for social alienation. Yes, yes, but yes, yes. In this context, the, 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 the budget system that you are speaking of or all the form of or the tester or the yes, yes, the sir. I, yes, sir. I understood, sir. You are breaking, but I think I got the correct, sir. Sir, it is actually, I think it is the responsibility of the social scientist, the people who are gathered down here, the enthusiasts of social science. It is our responsibility to create the counter narrative. As Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak said that the subaltern can, can't speak. Yes, but the social scientist can make the subaltern speak. That's what I believe. And that's what we all are endowed with. Why the countries like Brazil fail to defend COVID-19 pandemic? So actually, oh yes, Joel, uh, it acts actually outside the ambit, but I will tell you, uh, most model or the capitalist model, which uh, was used by many like uh, the Brazilians and also the US, they thought of unrestricted freedom and and even uh, Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, never took this serious. Uh, like Trump, he told that this is a flu. It comes, it grows, it won't uh, affect much. So it was the laxity of the administration which would have led to 
Brazil crumbling like this in the face of the pandemic. Thank you, Joel, for the question. The Sansa says that we are on the same motion, but not on the same body. Yes, sir. It happens with many. <laughs> OK. Uh, can you tell me how the number 19 has come for COVID? Uh, I think it's uh, basically uh, due to the year of occurrence, COVID-19. So another question, the team like, yes, uh, the link for um, submission of your feedbacks is right, right here. Please go to the link and uh, fill it out. By this time, I will take some more questions. Anyone uh, with questions? Reni Anna. Hi, Reni. So we have been seen the marginalizing, that marginalizing the oppressed during the pandemic situation has a long history. So do you expect any changes in this? Uh, Rome, Reni, Rome was not built in a day. Uh, as far as uh, this uh, seven, eight months with Corona, I don't see any changes. The number of communities are increasing. In Black Death, you only had a specific community, the Jewish community. In the Antonian plague, you had Christians. But coming to COVID-19, I don't know. Everybody, everybody is being hated during COVID. Uh, so I don't think uh, any changes will come now because that's, uh, I told you, this is how the discourse of the dominant. Uh, this is how power works. Power always uh, finds uh, the other. Power always finds the other to be targeted. Power struggle always finds somebody to target. So I don't expect any changes. Thank you for the question, Dani. Yes, uh, as Krishna Sar rightly said, new and dominant discourses will take over the other. The marginalization will continue. Thank you for the observation, Krishna Sar. A really meaningful observation. Yes, I will take a couple of questions. The time has lapsed, but I will take a couple of questions. Do you think uh, lockdown? Uh, see, lockdown uh, per se, if you are able to meet the needs of the people, lockdown is good. But what happened in India was that we uh, went to lockdown when the daily number of cases was 200 and 300. Now uh, the daily number is counting in five digits. And uh, we are in the process of unlock three. <laughs> so uh, it's effective, but uh, giving you provided giving you are able to provide the people, able to keep them in their homes by providing them what they want, providing them bread, providing them their daily routine. If you can do that, it's effective. Uh, thank you, Subin K. And uh, I will take one more question. The time has uh, ran short, uh, it's a one and a half hour session. Uh, I feel that we can give them uh, five or ten more minutes because uh, because uh, lengthy session. Yes, 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 yes. Let people donate and celebrate. We can give them five or ten more. Yes, yes, yes. That will be fine. Okay, 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 okay. Sure. Uh, Subin, so the feedback link is uh, pub, uh, it is published. Uh, it's in the chat box. Please go up and see. See, uh, what is the precaution? Anju, the only precaution is to uh, stay home and stay safe. But uh, in a country like India, when uh, where uh, the number of poor uh, astronomical, I don't think that uh, even staying home will uh, work. I think we should uh, look for some other mechanisms like vaccination. Lockdown in India or keeping at home don't work. See, for salaried class, it's okay. Some from somebody who is drawing salary from the government or who is able to work from home, it's okay. But what about the poor? They have to get out to work. 
So uh, I think that answers your question, Anju. Adulya, KA, how can we change the attitude of people about COVID-19? Adulya, that's what we, I was saying. Uh, people uh, can't be changed because they are ruled over by discourses. They are ruled over by ideologies. So people, the response of people cannot be changed. I believe so. Maybe I, you think I'm a pessimist, but that's the reality I think uh, is the most valid. How effective the plasma therapy treatment for COVID-19? Subin, uh, actually I am nobody to comment on plasma therapy. I, I am an academician, aspiring academician. And uh, I uh, don't tell, though I, uh, you know, deal with epidemics diseases uh, i don't delve into the scientific part <laughs> actually uh, i left sciences when i was in 10th standard i was a pretty bad student at science <laughs> uh, so i can't answer that uh Rijo, is in india we say we have a vaccine for covid is that uh, yes uh, three or four vaccines have been put up uh, they are in the like in the session of human trials, they are uh, doing human trials. Let's wish uh, that uh, things will come up good. I am hoping for the better. Uh, sorry, Subin. Uh, actually, you should have asked this question uh, to the expert who came yesterday. I think he also uh, gave an opinion. I will tell him, uh, tell you what he told. He told me that uh, plasma therapy uh, has not been validated. It is being tried in some part of Kerala and also in Delhi. It is not validated. That's what he told me. So that's what I uh, have to tell you. That's uh, that's limited. That's how limited my knowledge is. Uh, so sorry, Subin. Uh, that's only what I have. Uh, okay, thank you, Adulia. Thank you, Rajoy. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Subin. Thank you, Subin. Uh, Vishnu sir, uh, can we cut show, like, can we end the session? Okay, if we have no more questions. Yes. If you have any more questions, please ask. I am going to wind up the session because it has been a long day for me. I yeah. haven't slept last night. <laughs> sir, uh, even people who are getting back home from Yes, yes, you are right, Kala. You are right. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Joel. You are very, very, you are very, very true, Kala. You are very true. That's a powerful observation from your side. Yes, uh, I will end with one statement. Uh, though pandemics have always been opportunities. If you look at the Christians, I told you that during Antonian plague, <laughs> uh, the Christians were targeted, but the the work, the charity that the Christian community did during that time made an impression on the non-Christians and it led to uh, conversions, especially uh, during Justinian play. We can see that <clears throat> the Byzantine Empire, Justinian, is asking the people, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, to uh, <clears throat> work like the uh, Christians. So uh, COVID has also uh, been uh, play, uh, no, a period. Uh, epidemics has always been a period when things have uh, uh, got better. It is the crisis has been turned into opportunities. And uh, as an ending statement, I will tell one more thing. Uh, my question, there is one more question from Rahul, yes, my question is when a pandemic is broke out 10 years from now, will there be people who is still believing, uh, see there are people who still believe in superstitions, uh, we came across a father in Kerala, a priest, he was uh, walking, I think it was in Idiki district, he was walking all around without no mask saying that the God will protect me and yesterday news came uh, saying that he is infected with Corona, <laughs> so superstitions will be there. And it will go on. It is the part of the culture and it is here to stay. It, it won't go away. <coughs> and uh, yes, uh, my concluding statement. So this COVID-19 has been a greater opportunity. 
Thank you, Rahul. Uh, thank you, Vidya Kumar. Uh, so this COVID-19 has been a great opportunity for many. I feel so because uh, we were locked up. We were able to uh, strive for excellence. I request all of you, my fellows, uh, fellow social scientists, my students, my uh, brothers, all of you, to concentrate. We may be in this situation for a little more longer. I request you to concentrate on your work, not to go outside and mind others' business. You may be having a big nose. You may be having a big nose, but doesn't give you the permission to poke your nose on everybody. So it's time, uh, I think you should turn back your work, do some academic work, prove your credibility, be a good social scientist. Thank you all. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you everybody at the Department of History, my brothers, uh, Professor Matthew Sam, Professor Vishnu Nambudiri, my dear students, the principal, he was also here, Dr. Vagis Matthew, uh, the magnificent, the wonderful crowd that I had here. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you uh, from the core of my heart. I love you 3000, as Tony Stark says. <laughs> uh, over to you, sir. Vishnu, sir, over to you. There is one final question, and that is from Adira Ahmed. Yes, 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 sir. COVID free India, uh, Adira, uh, what I hear from WHO, as what all we hear from WHO, COVID is here to stay for longer. So, um, making a COVID free India, I think I will leave it to the politicians. Yes, sir. We should start over to you. Sir, even in our Kerala, people get discriminated on basis of caste evolution. Even though Kerala is a high literate state, people don't know how to respect. If a person in our neighborhood gets COVID, if people treat them like top. I don't say every people in Kerala are like that, but some. Yes, yes, Albin, Albin Thomas John, the Thomas Jacob, sorry, it's a really valid uh, insight. Thank you. That, that's how. See, the lepers, uh, even if you go to history, I will uh, answer this. Even if you go to history, when Manismriti mandated the leper to be stigmatized and considered as an outcast. So, uh, this, it has uh, happened all the way long. It's not the new thing that is happening in India or in Kerala. Uh, which if you uh, go to see Kerala, uh, the age old practices, we find uh, the disease chicken box is attributed or most of the diseases are attributed to lower caste non RNAs goats. We can see that. Uh, so uh, it is not due to the reverence to these goats, but it is due to the hate to these communities that to the lower caste community or the depressed or the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe that uh, these non aryan goats are bestowed with the responsibility of uh, disease contagions like uh, cholera, chicken box, etc. We call it Pasuri down here. And one more thing, and if you see uh, Sarah Joseph Alahaida Penmakal, that's a uh, novel, one of my favorites. So there is a place uh, she mentions called Kokanjeri. Kokanjeri is a place full of filth and people in uh, Trishur town, people uh, find this uh, outsiders uh, see Kokanjeri as a land inhibited by the wild, by the diseased, uh, by the people contagious. So it, it goes on. It's, it's the society has always been like this, and uh, there has been uh, customs like uh, Kalyanatam or Kalyanuta and Sipodi Kivakal in Kerala, uh, which uh, our traditions to, you know, uh, bolster, make this uh, lower caste goats happy, so that this Mariam, uh, somebody like, uh, you know, this lower caste goat won't hurt the upper caste. So more than reverence, what you see is hate. Same like Manna Pedi, Pule Pedi, a custom that existed in Kerala. Uh, it is not the reverence, but it is the hate towards the lower caste that you see in all these things. Thank you, Alvin uh, Thomas Jacob, for this wonderful questions and wonderful observation. You have been uh, very, very good. You have been very positive throughout the session. And many others, I am not. Uh, and Shan Eugene, is especially, she, uh, uh, all of you have been a wonderful audience. And over to you, sir. Okay, now I may call upon uh, Megha Suresh for the order of hand. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. 
very warm good morning to all who present here. On behalf of Department of History at Marthama College, Tiruvalla, I, Meha Suresh, Joint Secretary of History Association, with the great honor and privilege to deliver a word of thanks. First of all, I may like to express our sincere thanks to our principal, Dr. Vargis Matthew, for joining us. And we have been very fortunate to have some eminent persons for this webinar. And I must mention our deep sense of apologize for network problem. But I believe the talk was, the talk was very inspiring and interesting. I take this opportunity to thank the chair of the section, Professor K.M. Vishnu Nambudri, and my special thanks to our Professor Agni G.K. for this excellent presentation. Also, I would like to thank Professor Matthew Sam for being with us. And thanks to all participants okay, and students for your great participation in this webinar. I'm sure that uh, participants must have been fitted by attending the section. And one more thing, you all invited to attend the day three topic, Pandemics and the History of Contagionism by Dr. Parvati Menon, Assistant Professor of History at the All Saints College, Trivandrum, which is scheduled on next day at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Please do your best to be there at specified time. Once again, I thank you all for your great attention. The section is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Megha. Okay, just me, just, uh, let me repeat once more what uh, Megha ended her uh, talk with. Uh, we will be having our final session tomorrow, that is at 4 p.m., by Dr. Bhavati Menon, who is an assistant professor of history at All Saints College to And she will be speaking on pandemic and the history of contagion. Please join us tomorrow, 4 p.m. With that, we end our session here. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, the beautiful audience. Thank you.
everyone please leave the meeting i have to stop recording The meeting is adjourned. Please leave the meeting. I have to stop recording.
Hello, yeah, Dad, please leave the meeting, okay? We have to stop this.